First, I'd like to thank you all for welcoming me into your homes or your hotel rooms, as in the Milums where they are at. Thank you very, very much. It is a beautiful Saturday. I know everybody wants to get outside and get those gardens planted. So we're all honored that you're joining us today for Club Leadership Learning Assembly. All of you that are with me right now are definitely leaders within your club and within Rotary District 5190. You are in the vocational services portion. So if this is by accident, please leave the meeting and go ahead and go back to the Rally Hub and you can find the correct one that you were looking for. But if it's not by accident, yay, let's have some vocational fun. So housekeeping rules is we are keeping everybody on mute as we go through the session. We have, uh, you can put in your chat bar any questions you may have, or you can directly um, send questions to the person that's listed on there that says questions. And hopefully at the end, we will have some time and I wanna hear some ideas that you all may have that I have not shared or that would be helpful for all of us. So in our back room, we have a back room tech and he is none other than past district governor 5180, Mr. Ray Ward, yay. He's in employee benefits insurance in Citrus Heights. So, and he does an absolutely fabulous job on the back room. He is asked to do the Institute pets and everything else in the back room. So thank you very, very much, past district governor Ray Ward. You're welcome. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now we're gonna go on to something unique and different. Oh, bear with me. I'm doing good here. Ta-da, look at that. We magically changed screens. <laughs> All right, so really quick, for those of you that don't know me, and I'm sure most of you do, my name is Stacy Graham. I'm a proud member of Auburn Gold Country Rotary, and my classification is automotive repair. Yes, that is it. I'm an ASC certified master technician, and I own two shops in Auburn, California, the Master Technicians and Rogers Automotive. I'm very, very proud of that. I've worked really, really hard. And because of these two shops is why I can be a Rotarian and I can continue to give to the foundation and help encourage membership. When I started my Rotary journey in 2000, I had not heard of any other automotive people within the Auburn, California. So I was quite honored to be asked to join Rotary because it was a career that I don't see much of in Rotary. And I'd like you all to go out there and change that if you at all possible. You all, I hope have your car serviced. I really hope if not, we need to talk. And you can always invite your favorite automotive repair facility owner or manager to join your club. They bring a lot of good things to that. So, we're going to start off with when did vocational service enter Rotary? Actually, vocational service was created, the Rotary was created around vocational service. You see, before these four men got together and decided to start a Rotary club, Paul Harris, who was a young attorney in Chicago and single, four years prior to doing the first meeting in Rotary, went to a dinner with fellow attorneys. And as he was wandering back home, this is true story, you can look it up on the web. When he was wandering back home, he thought, what a great way to network and get to know other businesses here and actually make new friends because he was relatively new. So he worked on this concept for about four years. Rotary started with vocational service. Did they know that they were going to be a service club that did projects for the community? No. Did they know that they were going to go out and eradicate polio? 
No. Did they know that they were going to be worldwide? No. They set it up as strictly a business mixing mixer, which I like to say is the first business networking group created in America. And that was by Paul Harris and this ingenious idea that has saved many of businesses. In fact, when San Francisco was having a horrible time and big trouble, they had a Rotary Club go over there and actually help all the vocational businesses there and save a lot of jobs. And the four-way test that things we think, say, and do was actually created to help a business that was in trouble and about to file bankruptcy. The owner of that business was a Rotarian and he sat down and thought of different things that he could teach his employees on what they could do to better help their clients. And there in turn came up with the four-way test of which we're also proud to say every week. And then Rotary adopted that into their practices. So when you have to do a trivia B on Rotary, reach out to me because I've got some inside secrets that most people don't even realize. But since that time, we have noticed that we don't see a lot of Rotary, a lot of vocational service within our Rotary clubs. I've been to many of clubs and I've seen many people find for speaking about their businesses. I don't understand that because through my business is how I give back to the foundation. So I don't understand the one thing that Rotary started off being is now something that people get in trouble for talking about. I, it boggles my mind. I think we should all be proud of our members, especially our members that are in business and especially through the recent years. They've had the most challenging times and had to reinvent themselves several times over every day, sometimes on the second. So let's bring it back to our clubs. So when we're thinking vocational service and we're thinking about membership, there are several ways that we can take this. First of all, we can do a membership assessment of the members in our club. I want you to take a second and I want you to think about those people that are within your club now and the various jobs that they have or the professions. Are they useful? Do they bring different skills to the club that helps your club succeed? Now I want you to think about your club and think about all the vocations that you do not see in your club. Perhaps do you have a social marketing, social network marketing person in your club? Website designer in your club? Media in your club? Automotive repair in your club. Think about all those classifications that back when we were in high school didn't even exist. That is where your younger people are. They are taking on those kind of jobs. Computer science. You have a member in your club that does that. Now take that out of your club and look out in your community. Perhaps you do business with one of these people. Perhaps you are a business owner that has a website that you have somebody else design for you. Have you asked them to come to Rotary? Perhaps you're in business and you don't have time for the social media marketing. So you hire a company to do that. Have you asked them to join your club? They are a huge asset. And generally, these are going to be the younger people. Because 
I know myself, these jobs were not available when I was in school. I mean, after all, the computer had just come out when I was in junior year. But they bring so many skills and so much to your club, but they also bring that diversity, that younger generation with fresh ideas and fresh minds. And they may help you figure out how do we reach out into the community? How do we find those projects that are really what are needed right now? So I want you to do an assessment of your membership within your club. Find those professions that are not in your club. People that you do business with that are not in your club. And I want you, as you saw District Governor-elect Anita said, invite them to a meeting. And when you introduce them, I want you to introduce them and tell everybody what they do for a living. And why they are so good at what they do. Do a great introduction to a person that's visiting your club and highlight their vocation. And I guarantee you, they may think a little bit. Why, that's how I joined in 2000. I was in my mid-30s. And I went to a club and invited by an 80-year-old man thinking we had nothing in common. And when we stood up and he introduced me, he said, this is my automotive mechanic. He mentioned the name of my shop. And at the end of the meeting, I had people coming up to me asking me for business cards. I was hooked. I joined Rotary. And that is why I joined Rotary. It's no offense to, I was already doing community service. No, it was not court ordered like you all think, but I was already doing the community service. I was already doing all these things. I've been doing the relay for life. I've been out there helping all these things. I was already doing it. The Seroptimist had talked to me about joining them. The Kiwanis, the Lions, the Elks. What sets Rotary apart from everybody else? Vocational service. It is the only nonprofit service organization in the world that recognizes what our members do for a living. You use that tool. I ask you, I dare you to use that tool and invite people to your meetings and celebrate what they do for a living. I guarantee you success will happen. You will get new members and you will get those younger members that you were really, really striving for. And now with a lot of clubs doing hybrid meetings, you can ask teachers to join your club. You can ask these people that cannot get away from their office to join your club because they can be via hybrid. So let's talk about membership retention. Do you think that vocational service will help retend, re help with your membership retention? Absolutely. I am a proud member of Auburn Gold Country Rotary, and I'm actually the current club president of that club. Every person that has joined this year has not left, they're engaged, and they're positive and they understand how important vocational service is to Rotary, to each of our members and to our community. In fact, when I introduce people that I haven't seen in a while, I may introduce what they do. CPAs, very, very busy time of the year for them. So I always thank them for coming to the meeting during the busiest time of the year. And I say what they do for a living and I say their business name. Real estate agents, another very busy time. If they're able to make it to a live meeting, I always say thank you. 
I know the real estate market is just going crazy right now. And I appreciate that you made it to the club. Do you think that creates some warm? They get recognition. They feel valued. They know I'm paying attention. They know I know what's going on in their world. Membership retention is making sure that we take care of each and every one of the members in our club. And if they're working, especially if we haven't seen it this year, I don't know when you guys are ever going to see it, but these people should be celebrated. They just made it through the hardest year of their club, of their life. Trust me, I guarantee you that. They were doing things that they'd never done. So if you have a banker in your club, recognize them. They just worked around the clock on PPPs and business loans. Recognize them. You have a nurse, a doctor, dentist, any first responder in your club, recognize them. Thank them. And do it in front of the entire club at a regular meeting. Automotive repair was considered essential during that. Oil, fuel, gas stations. If you have somebody that owns a chain of gas stations, I don't know why you're not asking them to join your club. These people worked endlessly. They were your frontline workers. If you have a small market, why not ask the owner of that small market to join your club? But first go in and thank them for working so hard through a very tumultuous time. And they may ask you, why are you thanking me? Well, because I'm a Rotarian and I believe in vocational service. And I believe that every single classification is valued. Every single one is part of the objects of Rotary. So I encourage you to celebrate your members. Don't find them when they want to talk about their business and said, say, hey, if you $5, $5, and I will let you talk about your business for five minutes. They need you to let them do that right now. They've struggled. And guess what? When other members, new members, existing members, they find out what these people do for a living, they will start working with them because Rotarians do business with other Rotarians. Our backroom tech, Ray Ward, is in employee benefits at one of my shop. He handles all of my employee benefits. My CPA is a member of my club. My business insurance person is a member of my club. I do business with fellow Rotarians because we're like-minded people. And I also know that they have the highest ethical values, else they wouldn't be in Rotary, right? They also practice that four-way test. My business attorney is a Rotarian. Where I get all my promotional material is from a Rotarian. Encourage your members to do business with fellow Rotarians, but most of all, let the members talk about what they do for a living and let them talk about themselves. There is nothing wrong with that. And yes, I know, just like me, they can go on and on and on and on sometimes. That's why you say you have $5, you get five minutes. Let them be put on your, your websites. There's all sorts of wonderful ideas. We'll delve into that in a little bit, but I cannot, ex I cannot tell you how important it is for membership attraction and membership recruitment to bring vocational service and highlight that in your club. Because how do they give to the foundation? It takes money. And some people, they are younger, just starting out in their careers. They have families. You have to tell them, what do you get for being a Rotarian? What's in it for you? I get networking. I get business. 
I get to be successful because I'm a Rotarian. So do that for me, pretty please, with sugar on top. Membership assessment within your club and outside your club. And start celebrating your members. Go to your president elects now and say, this is what I'm going to do. Please promise. Anybody promising? No, don't cross your fingers either. Because I can see it. All right. So now we've got working with others within your community. This is actually the Rotary Club of Truckee actually is listed in this business directory. Work with your Chamber of Commerce. Most Rotary Clubs are members of Chamber of Commerce. You can actually have, this is a novel idea. I challenge each one of you to do this within your areas is to have a chamber mixer with at least your Rotary Club and if you, at all possible, all the Rotary Clubs within your area at one of your members' businesses. Get your pamphlets out for each one of your club or your club and pass them out, but give that business a chance to showcase themselves. Do a mixer, a Rotary mixer because you are vocational service, you are part of this. Most of your members are part of a business association. Get in there, do a mixer, talk to them. In fact, if you have the time, then you go to other of the mixers and meet with those business people and you'll routinely see the same people over and over. Are they members of a Rotary Club? Maybe not, but could they potentially be members of a Rotary Club? Absolutely. And you'll get to know more of the businesses outside of the areas that you're mostly in. You'll learn more about your communities. We held a mixer probably about five years ago, and it was all four clubs in Auburn, California, and we didn't gain a lot of membership, but we got four new members. To me, that's a win. Because they saw that we celebrate business. So have a chamber mixer and work with your club, if not all clubs within your area. And I realize that's impossible for some, but if you can, then you can do multiple, multiple club mixers and you choose a member's business and they it does nothing but make them all warm and fuzzy, let me tell you. And then you have vocational tours of businesses. So why not choose a business that's not a member of your club? Perhaps you have, well, here in Auburn, California, we're very lucky, we have a wild bird sanctuary. You can go out and tour that and learn more about that. We also have a place that makes sauces. I call them the mad food scientists. So we asked them if we could come in and do a mixer, a rotary mixer, vocational mixer at their business. And they said, oh my goodness, absolutely. They took us on a tour of the facility and everything else. One person from that business joined Rotary. because you get out there and do a mixer, a rotary vocational mixer at a business that's non-Rotarian. It will work. You gotta trust me on this. Is it gonna be successful every time? Maybe not, but at least we tried. And guess what? We also become not the best known secret in our communities anymore. We're spreading what we're doing. So I challenge you to that. I'm gonna be watching on Facebook and you guys all know I watch on Facebook, it's crazy. And then you have community service awards. This is actually the Rotary Clubs in Western Nevada County that do this. And I'm always impressed when they do this. This was uh, from 2020 and it's 
I love to see when they post their things because it actually ends up in the local newspaper and it's on all over social media and everything. It's absolutely wonderful. What they do is they do community awards and they give to citizen, business, and volunteer. Now, not necessarily does everybody that wins an award, are they a Rotarian? But when people think about Rotary, do they think about these aspects of Rotary? Do they think about vocational service and how much the businesses mean to Rotary? We all hear that story and I get asked all the time, you're a Rotarian? Yeah, well, you're not a judge or a lawyer. Uh, no, no, I'm not. And I apparently don't actually look the type of a Rotarian, but it's all over my business. So when we do these community awards, and all your, your fellow Rotarians show up to do this, and you can do it within an area like the, the Western the club, Rotary Clubs of Western Nevada County do, or maybe you want to just do it as a club. That's okay too. But look out and find that business that's out there that's doing things within the community. You can even use your club Paul Harris points and award a Paul Harris to a non-Rotarian. The highest honor that we can give to a non-Rotarian is to give them a Paul Harris. That is the highest honor. And that, my friends, is a huge honor because we cherish our Paul Harris. And these people know that. So you come up with a very wonderful speech of why they deserved it. If they're out there doing things in their community, they're giving of their time, they're mentoring people, but they haven't joined a Rotary Club, give them a Paul Harris. The, I will be giving one to a non-Rotarian on the 25th of May. So, do the community awards such as the Western, the Rotary Clubs of Western Nevada County have done, get it publicized. You can get it in the paper. The paper loves these things. Media loves these things. Make an event. As you can see down in the picture, everybody's very well dressed. It's business casual there. You may not want to ask me to ever come to a business casual because I'll wear a uniform every time. So just, just saying. But do this and you might find more members, but you also take the best kept secret within your community is your fellow businessmen, is Rotary. All right, everybody promising? Good, yay. Now on to what we have all just witnessed heartbreaking absolutely heartbreaking i hit my wall i'm not gonna lie to you guys i'm a very positive happy-go-lucky person but let me tell you last april was not the case and i'm glad that we didn't do lla last april because i was a hot mess i didn't know what was going to happen with my businesses i didn't i didn't have any clue i was trying to keep my poise it was a nightmare this is a facebook page that was created by one of my Rotary Camarates, Marjorie Cook. She and I were actually sitting on her back deck, drinking a few bottles of wine, uh, talking about our business challenges that we were facing. And she said, well, what about if we do a Facebook group called Open in Auburn? And we highlight all the businesses that are open, all the small businesses that are open in Auburn. And I said, okay, so we, we just scroll through the pages and post. And she's like, yeah, we post and we, we let people know if they're open, what their guidelines are, or maybe they're doing an online shopping link or something just to save their businesses. We saw a lot of businesses really in trouble during that whole time. Maybe it's a restaurant that's offering to go or food delivery or anything else like that. 
So we were like, okay, we will just start scouring Facebook pages. And, and many of you know, I am a Facebook page stalker. So I was like, well, that's a piece of cake. So we started this group. Now you keep hearing me say group, not page. This is a group. We have a series of questions that we ask them before we approve them to be a member of this group. Because we didn't want any political post. We didn't want any mask shaming or mask this or vaccination this or vaccine. We just wanted it all about these small businesses. We have over 3.4 members of this group right now. When Margie and I, we do this once a month, we go around all the businesses in Auburn in different sections and we visit with them and ask them if we can help them with anything or, you know, can we take a picture of their business so we can get some better shots for the Facebook posts and everything else. They often try to give us stuff for free. They said, you kept our doors open. And we we're like, what? Well, yeah, we asked people how they heard of us. And they said it was because of Open in Auburn. We were about to shut our doors. Now, this is not chamber. They don't pay us to do this. We do this absolutely free in our own time. I get many messages every month, different businesses. Stacy, can you post this? Can you post that? Can you look at my page? I've got some, can you help me out with my page to make it look a little bit more attractive and all this stuff? I'm no marketing whiz, but it's certainly been fun. I've, I've learned a lot more about different businesses within my own community that I didn't realize were even there. And then we've had some open up even through the pandemic. We've had a, a float, one of those flotation things, relaxation, flotation places. I asked her to come to a meeting because I'd like to know more about that business, but I think that she might be a really awesome Rotarian because she could probably teach us all to relax a little bit. So I challenge you within your area, open up and open an Amador Upcountry Facebook group. Get there and say, this is what we're doing. And when they ask you, why are you doing this for me? Why you're not charging us? Tell them because we're Rotarians and we believe in our small businesses. Our small businesses are very, very important to us. Many of you know that Auburn Gold Country actually did win vocational service award for this project this past year. We didn't go at it. Margie and I were drinking wine on a deck. Obviously we did not go at it thinking that, hey, this is gonna be super uber big. It turned out to be bigger than we thought it would be. And actually in the later part of this year, we're going to have a Saturday where everybody plays the same song steps out on the storefront of their business and holds hands. And it's basically a song, we made it. It's the heart of our community is our small businesses. Think about them, remember them and get these groups going. Scott, I know up in Reno, you probably have a lot of different small businesses in a lot of different areas. Your club can do one and another club can do one or you can do one for entire, but have more than one administrator on the page because for Auburn, it's fairly easy for Marjorie and I to do this, but for bigger areas like Scott up in the Nevada, Reno, Nevada area, that's a little huge of an area. So you're gonna want more. I know that Robin and Tom Milam who are listening right now can do one up in Nevada County. And I think it would be ever so helpful but you don't wanna make it a page, you wanna make it a group. Therefore, you can pull things off of the site that should not be put on there. And you can also make sure that you don't have people entering that should not actually be on that site. So please do that. It's a helpful tool. Your businesses will love you. And again, you're getting out there and you're sharing what Rotary does with vocational service. 
Okay, now we're on to da, 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 da. club directories. How many have club directories? Every vocation of every member, and they keep it regularly updated. Okay, let's try to do that. You are my vocational chairs. You are my champions. You're going to make this happen, right? Right. And you're going to keep them updated. So you're going to do this. You're going to do a club directory. So guess what will happen after that? What do you think is going to happen next? As district vocational chair for two more years, what am I going to do next? I'm going to go and say I want an area directory. How many have an area directory of all the businesses within all the Rotarian-owned businesses? Oh, dear. Oh, dear. I know Tom Milam does. Okay, once we get everybody with an area directory, what is Stacy going to do next before probably the busiest few years of her life? I know I'm pretty busy already, but district wide vocational directory. Woo! Why do I want to do that? Scott, when I'm in Reno driving up there for a meeting that's actually a month later than I'm driving up there. And I wanted to say, okay, well, now that I've driven up here for an absolutely no apparent reason, then I wanted to go to a restaurant or a Rotarian owned business for something to eat. It was 8.15 in the morning. This is a true story. I will tell you guys about it later. And uh, I wanted something to eat, but I didn't know where to look. But if we had a district-wide directory, I could go anywhere in the district and find the businesses, right? You all saw what we did for the restaurants, breweries, and wineries, and even a candy store. Did you all see in the House of Friendship, the restaurants? If you did not, go to the House of Friendship on your Rally Hub and please look at that. We did that for these restaurants, breweries, wineries, and a candy store absolutely for free. One of those restaurants happens to be Awful Annie's. I see you, Scott. One of those restaurants happens to be Awful Annie's in Auburn, California. And he is a proud member of our club. And this last week, he gave us $100 because he got free advertisement. They lost one of their restaurants in Lincoln through the pandemic. That meant the world to him. Does that not help with membership retention? But it also helps me know where I can go anywhere in our district for anything I need. Scott, you had something really quick to say? Yeah, this question, uh, what format do you envision this director to be in? Paper copy, Club Runner? Club Runner. Right. Club Runner. And you all have access to your Club Runners. Uh, and if you don't have the level 30 access to your Club Runners page, if you are a vocational chair, I encourage you to meet with your club secretary and your president and ask him to please give you the access. So you can update all of the vocations, all the members and what they do. You need level 30 to do that. So please ask the leaders of your, you know, the president, president-elect, club secretary to give you access because you are a vital role in your club. You will help your club succeed, but you have to have the tools to do that. So this is all in your club's club runner. And then I'm working with District 5180 on how they do it with the whole entire district. Because in the state of California, we have laws and privacy laws. So we can't put together a whole different Excel spreadsheet of all this stuff and just give it out without making sure everybody signs consent forms. So we have to be very, very careful in California. And as we know, our district spans Nevada and California. So everybody promised me you're going to get your club directory up to date promise me and then everybody promise me you're going to work with the other clubs in your area to do an entire area directory promise me now and then i promise you i will work around the clock to get that district-wide directory done up so whenever your 
you know, Andrew, if you decide to come to Auburn and you want to have a great Bloody Mary, you'll go to Awful Annie's, a Rotarian owned business. If your car breaks down in Reno, sorry, I can't help you out with that. But hopefully one of the clubs in Reno has been so smart to invite an automotive repair person to their club that you'll know exactly where to have your car towed or repaired. Right? And maybe you want to move. Real estate agents. They're all over. It's really, really cool. And then we have mentorship. Allow your members to maybe you want to help out the youth a little bit. I know it's been a challenge with us and the youth this, so far this year. So you can have mentor days. You are Rotarians and you are very, very wise. You are successful. If you are retired, I personally want to meet with you to see how you got there. But you can teach kids how to do proper interviewing skills, resumes, balance their checkbook, things that we don't learn in high school anymore. Reach out to those high schools. And if you have uh, some schools like I do, we have uh, schools called Confluence in Auburn, which are the kids that um, have a little bit of a trouble. This is very, very useful. This is real life tools coming from real life people. I often talk to students about automotive repair and especially female, young girls really want to talk to me about automotive repair. I have no clue why. But, you know, when these students look at you as Rotarians, they think of you as the most successful people they've ever met. I'm going to tell you that. Uh, Stacy, you have five minutes left. Thank you. So I encourage you to have your club do a Rotary Mentor Day at a school. You members have all the wonderful tools to teach them. Oh my gosh, who is that? Oh, that's Colonel Sanders. How many here knew that Colonel Sanders was an active Rotarian for his almost his entire career? Active, he wasn't honorary, he was an active Rotarian. That picture right there, well, you could take a picture of me with a wrench and post it on your website and social media. Again, helping your members get the word out about their businesses and allowing the public to see what we really are all about. We're not what you think we are. We're young, we're vibrant, we're excited, we're successful, we work really hard. We love our communities. Rotary's our family. Do I look like your normal Rotarian? Before you joined Rotary. Post your members and their businesses on your social networks and your website. You can even say for 25 bucks a month, we'll go ahead and post an ad on our website about your business contact information and everything. It's a wonderful tool, use it. But that is about all my slides, my goodness. How'd you like that? Ray put that all together for me. It was uh, really, really cool. So um, now I'm gonna open it up for any questions really quick while we have time. Just a quick, quick comment. We post all of our club members, company logos, contact uh, on our website. That is awesome. Our so what website is that? What Rotary Club Our, our club website, Centennial Sunset, Reno Centennial Sunset. All right. So I encourage everybody to go to Re Re <laughs> Reno Centennial Sunset website and check out how they do that. And if you have any more questions on how to do that, reach out to Scott. Well, how to do it would probably need to be a webmaster. <laughs> but, you know, then, well, then you can hook them up with the proper people. Right. So everybody at the end of today, after all the sessions, please go to Reno Centennial Sunset, look at their website and see how they're promoting their members' businesses.
It's a very, very good tool. Any other questions? Tom? No questions, great presentation. And uh, I'll just mention that in our club, we do uh, socials as well as lunchtime meetings. And we have uh, long had a policy of inviting a local business person to come in and tell us about their business. And it works very, very well. Mm -hmm. Another wonderful idea. That's the Rotary Club of Nevada City. So and if you, pardon? That's correct. Yes. And if you go to their website, I'm sure some of those socials and stuff are posted on there. And I believe they're hybrid. So you can actually join in um, or actually Zoom. They, you can join in and see how they do that if you'd like. So the Rotary Club of Nevada City. And yes, Judy Clark, the presentation has been recorded. We didn't tell you guys that before. I'm sorry. My apologies. Do we need to black anybody out so we don't see anything? Privacy laws. Yeah. So really quick before we hang up, again, I am so honored to be with you here today. My name is Stacy Graham, Rotary Club of Auburn Gold Country. I'm actually your district governor nominee designate 2023-2024. I have no clue what they were thinking when they said that. And my email address is S-T-A-C-Y. D5190 at gmail.com. If you've got a vocational idea that you want me to hear about and you want me to share with everybody else, please let me know. Or if you have any questions or you need some help, Facebook, website, whatever, reach out to me. I am right here for you. So again, there's my email. I'd love to thank you all for being here today and giving up your precious time. It means so much to me. Now, what you're going to do is you will be leaving this meeting. You'll go back into the rally hub so you can head on into your next session. Again, all of District 5190 appreciates each and every one of you. You are a big value to us. You make my heart swoon, especially for joining vocational service. Thank you and have a great rest of your day.